In today's rapidly evolving job market, landing your dream job might seem like an elusive goal. The insider secrets being used by successful job seekers today is AI, and it's a real game changer for those professionals looking to strategically position themselves for the next big opportunity. Best of all, it's not hard to use, and most of what you need to do today is free. In this session today, we're going to address how to find the best job openings, even if you're only almost qualified, how to perfect your resume to match the job you're applying for, how to spot weaknesses in your resume and fix them, how to bypass those automated resume screening tools, some ATS tips, and how to beat applicant tracking systems when you're missing key skills in your resume. You'll want to stay for this last one as we can show you how to address those awful MBA preferred or when they when they don't say but you're pretty sure they are screening for Ivy League education or some other qualification that you believe really has nothing to do with the job but it's getting you screened out so let's get started how to find the best job openings for positions you are qualified for or almost qualified for head over to your favorite AI tool like ChatGPT Microsoft Copilot etc to start your search I'm not saying don't look on LinkedIn or Indeed or wherever you like to search for job openings, but add the AI tool to the mix to narrow down your choices. Then put in your requirements. So you might say something like job openings for director of accounts payable that permit remote work. If you don't put in any location, the AI tool is going to read the location from your computer's data, which may or may not be what you want. The first time I tried it, tried this playing around with the tool, I was shocked to see that not only did it know what city I lived in, it was able to narrow it down to the, the small town. So let's say you're in the office and you want a shorter commute. You might add something like this. Look only for jobs within 10 miles of, and then of course put your hometown in. Now, while putting in your exact requirements may get you openings that fit you to a T, it could also limit your options, so you might want to be a little bit more open. You might add something like knowledge of SAP if you have it or whatever. You can repeat the search as often as you want, refining your requirements depending on the results you receive and how flexible you are. Fine tune your resume to match the position you are applying for. Ever wonder why the, your resume isn't landing you interviews even though you believe you're qualified? I'll show you how you can turn your resume into a recruiter magnet. If I were doing this manually, and you may want to try this, here's what I would do. I would print out the job listing, and I would do this for every job that I was going to apply for, especially the ones that I really wanted. Print out the listing and then circle or highlight what I consider to be the keywords in the listing. You can do this without printing it out, of course, but I like to do this thing on paper. But you know, you can absolutely do it in a Word document. And by the way, Keywords should include anything that the job listing says is required or preferred. So if it says MBA required or preferred, circle that. And we're going to come back to this a few times. Now, now it's time to fine tune your resume. Um, make sure that your resume that you're going to send in to apply for the job has as many of the keywords circled that you have circled on the job description in it as possible. Review your resume review your resume and work into it as many of the missing keywords as you can but don't lie if you don't have experience with sap for example well don't say you do because that's not something you can fudge if you will but get as many of these keywords as you can onto your resume you can do this by hand or you can get ai to help you with it do that by either copying and pasting the job description into the ai tool and then asking it to view your resume identifying missing skills in comparison to that job description and you can either uh, copy and paste your resume in or if you're using chat gpt you can use that little paper clip thing on the bottom there are also paid tools for you to do this at the time that we're recording it one such tool is job scan and it, it right now they're offering a two-week trial 
but otherwise it's $89.95 for a quarter or $49.95 for a month at this point. So you'll have to, you know, just check depending upon when you buy. As time goes on, I'm sure there will be other tools like this. Next thing you want to do is identify the problem spots in your resume. And by problem spots, I mean spots where you're missing a key uh, ingredient that they're looking for. So let's talk about how to identify the weak spots in your resume and prepare to address them. Now, no one's perfect right but what if you could pinpoint your exact weak spots before the recruiter does and fix them even before you apply the trick is to identify those weak spots ie when you're missing a key skill or so, and figure out how you're going to address them when the recruiter brings them up and you know they will you probably know what some of them are but others are not so obvious and the goal here is to help you avoid looking like a deer in the headlights when this issue is identified and the, the uh, recruiter asks you about it and you go uh i i don't know i mean you know that's not a good look ask the ai tool to compare your resume to the job listing and identify any weaknesses or deficiencies uh, this can be done as part of your fine tuning now all this will be well and good you may be thinking but it seems that you're still forever rejected by those automated screening tools how can you get past the automated screening tools the ATS are the bots stopping you from getting your dream job don't worry we're going to show you how I don't want to say hack the system but close to it and make sure your resume beats the bots this is especially difficult for those starting out not getting a response that is and the problem but the problem is not unique to that did you know that experts estimate that 75% of all resumes submitted are disqualified by that automated software reviewing the applications that's right the interviewer never even sees your application so let's get started and take a look at how the automated tracking software works so you don't do something that will get you automatically rejected so this is what it does number one it extracts contact information works history education and skills from the, your resume and it stores that extracted data in the ATS database then when they're searching for candidates the hiring manager searches the database for candidates by typing in the keywords so you know that's why part of the reason why we made such a big deal about keywords or, uh, previously and the ATS scores uh, ranks and scores the qualifications against the job description so th this is done in an automated uh, basis and this is why sometimes you're getting a screen down if you will okay so tips on setting up your resume so this doesn't happen to you um, start off by using a standard word document and save it in a .docx format okay just simple word okay um, don't use a PDF unless the portal where you are submitting the resume specifically says it accepts PDF format so you might think that that looks more professional and I know I certainly do but you want to use the word document and you want to keep your formatting simple okay don't make it fancy all over the place because remember in all actuality the person interviewing you is not going to see that don't use acronyms on your resume because the bot won't understand them the interviewer might certainly the person you're going to report to probably will but you have to get past the bot okay place your name email and address prominently at the top of the resume this is not a place to get fancy or whatever and lastly use basic language remember the bot is the one looking at your resume so you don't need to try and impress it you just need to get past it um, incorporate these tips when setting up your resume so you don't get weeded out for an irrelevant reason like they can't find your email address ask the AI tool to look at the job, job description and give you one or two keywords most relevant to the position and of course you want to make sure you have those keywords on your resume lastly and that this kind of surprised me but I guess I could see in hindsight why why uh, they say this don't apply for too many positions at the same company a number of experts have said this you may think that it's flattering and it shows your interest in the company but it doesn't show an interest in a particular job and the AI and the hiring manager may take it as a sign of desperation and that is a not a good look when you're interviewing so you've done everything we suggest but you're still missing a requirement in the job description that says is 
key, but you don't agree. How can you beat the box when missing a, a key but non-essential item on your resume? I don't want to say it's no problem, but I'm going to show you a sneaky way to work around it without breaking any rules or lying. Okay, don't lie. Um, if you're tempted, for example, to say that you got an MBA because you're thinking, what difference does it make if 20 years ago I got an MBA or I didn't, you may be right. But for starters, if, you, if you're caught, there's a good chance you'll be terminated, even if it's 10 years later. So nobody wants to be in that position. Um, and more to the point, do you want this hanging over your head? Do you want them always worrying, oh, you know, somehow somebody's going to find out? And of course, if they discover this during the hiring process, the odds are high that your application will be automatically rejected because they're going to think if they lie about this, what else are they will they lie about? Okay, so you can't do that. What can you do? Well, you can get creative and let's look at a few scenarios. Let's say you, you suspect that they're looking for somebody from an Ivy League school and you didn't go there. Personally, I hate this one, maybe because I didn't go to an Ivy, but I hate being excluded for a reason that has nothing to do with my ability to do the job. But you can ignore my personal rantings um, and let's see what you can do. Well, what about a certificate? What about attending a one-day seminar? You can list these under other education or other training, and it might get past the automated bot. In a pinch, you might, you might list an online class that you took, but don't take these approaches if you didn't attend the class, because the odds are high that if you do make it past the screening bot, the interview is going to question you extensively about that course during your interview. And you obviously want to be able to um, answer correctly. Okay, the next thing uh, that, that comes up, uh, and, and I see this frequently in accounts payable, it will say bachelor's degree or BA or BS, um, required or preferred. Okay, and when they say preferred, you want to try and get it on your resume because um, what they're saying is that uh, it's important to them. So again, don't lie, can't lie. But what if you're working on one? What if you're taking some course? You can always put something on your resume that says BS expected 2028, okay? But again, expect to be questioned. But you get the idea, find a way to legitimately work that term into your resume. Hopefully you've got the idea uh, of what I'm trying to, to convey to you. So now you've followed all our tips and miraculously you get called for the interview. Yay! Congratulations, but you know, your work is not done. You've just gotten through past the first step. Let's make sure you ace your interview with some final tips. You need to prepare for the interview. How? We've got some tips for you to help you ace that interview, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.